Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope you're doing really well in this quantum entangled moment in time. And that whenever and wherever you happen to be on that quanta matrix, I hope that you're able to count your blessings. I hope that you are able to see all the wonderful things about your life if you can hear me that means several things it means that you are able to hear be grateful for your ears if you can hear me right now you're listening to me on the internet so you have access to Wi-Fi maybe you're in your car so be grateful you have a car and maybe just maybe you are listening to me on a phone cell phone a lot of people in the world don't have these luxuries. So those are some of your blessings right there. If you are healthy and untouched by coronavirus, be grateful for that. And if you've been able to be out there protesting and you weren't shot by a rubber bullet, be grateful for that. If you are alive and well in this moment, you have a roof over your head and you have a sweater on your back if you're cold or some really cool looking shorts if you're hot (laughs) if you own a pair of shoes and if you're not going to go to bed hungry tonight these are all blessings I am grateful for the blessing of living in Ecuador I really really love it here and I open my window as you could tell I want you to hear these frogs. Uh, Hopefully you can hear them. They sound like this. (laughs) And then there's like a chirping one that kind of sounds like a bird. That's another kind of frog. And every now and again, you might get to hear actual birds chirping. This is post-twilight. Post-twilight. It's about an hour after the sun went down. And this is what it sounds like next to the river here in the Andes Mountains. I hope you can hear this. So beautiful and so peaceful. And for me, this is one of my blessings. Another blessing is our water has, was restored. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, water company. We had a bit of a crisis this week. No water for two whole days. It was late in the evening when we got water yesterday. And a lot of the neighbors said that the water's coming out black. The water's black coming out out of the pipes. So we're a little bit leery of the water, but at least we're able to flush the toilets. That's, That's a huge blessing, having indoor plumbing. That's another blessing. Being able to breathe fresh, healthy air after a a nice rain for me is a healthy blessing today. And the fact that I have an ozone machine that I use to clear the air in my bedroom today, I'm grateful for that too. That's also a blessing. So if you can walk, that's a blessing. If you have awesome clothes, that's a blessing. If you have creature comforts, that's a blessing. And you know what? If you have access to red licorice, that's a blessing for you. (laughs) That's a blessing I wish I had, just to be honest with you. I'm going to, now that it's getting very cold and very dark, I'm going to go ahead, put down my blinds. (laughs) And I'm grateful 
also that I have blinds. That's a blessing because I don't always uh, want the coldness, the cold air coming in here. And I also don't want the neighbors to be able to see me. I, not that they would ever look, but um, sometimes I think maybe they can. Maybe they could see up here. I don't know. But I do love to be able to open those blinds in the morning and see the cows and the bull across the river grazing on the grass. And I love seeing the, um, the roosters and the hens walking along the river eating little bugs along the river. I, I, it's a huge blessing. Every night um, when I hear the wolf dogs barking right in front of my house, I know that that's because they're protecting me. They have sworn to protect us ever since we got here. That's been a huge blessing. And on and on it goes. I've had a really strange connection with my uh, twin flame in the past uh, half hour or so. So I feel like um, I'm getting a little sniffly because he's eating very spicy food. And I've had this pepper in my throat for like 15 minutes now. (laughs) And it's like kind of going up my nose, this pepper smell. He's, I don't know what the hell he's eating. I don't even know my twin flame. He's not, it's not like he's in my house or in the room with me. He's literally, I believe, in another country and I don't really know him. He has never even texted me. And yet here I am feeling his body. I, I swear to God, it's like the Corsican brothers. This is like a thing. It was crazy. Um, (laughs) Oh, my God. Yeah, it's like he's... uh, Earlier, about 20 minutes ago, I think he was eating, like, French bread and French cheese. And the cheese was excellent. It was like a Gruyere. And I think he had, like, a fresh... um, Like, a dry mozzarella. And, I mean... And and then he also had a fresh, soft, um, moist mozzarella... He had like two or three different kinds of mozzarella and he's living it up, eating cheese and pepper. And I think he has like an oil with pepper in it. He puts on the cheese and the bread. Sounds marvelous, right? But I've been having this crazy, like intense psychic connection, this quantum entanglement with my uh, twin flame right now. I'm loving it, but it's also very, very weird. Also earlier, um, I sat down to do the show and I got inspired to meditate. So I sat here to to meditate and as I meditated, I started doing this intense golden energy light meditation and I I set off a toric field around my body and um, suddenly got extremely high. (laughs) <laughs> it's like somehow I discovered and tapped into the energy of what feels like marijuana. And I haven't, I haven't smoked weed in over a year. Um, it, I don't know. I can't explain it, but I just start. So I started to record the show. I had 18 minutes of footage and I'm, I'm, I'm so high that I don't even think I could uh, take. I, I, it's like, I couldn't complete a whole thought. I, I couldn't even remember what the hell I had said. In fact, probably everything I've said now, but now I'm more coherent than I was an hour ago. (laughs) I literally was trying to record the show when the sun was just going down. I wanted to hear the twilight birds. I wanted to share the sounds of the twilight birds with you guys. And now the night birds have just started to come out. (coughs) Oh my God, and I have this pepper in my throat from my from my twin flame. It's like, oh God, please unhook me from him. I don't want to taste what he's tasting right now. This is weird. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, the, the, it, the, the flavor in my mouth has subsided. Like, that's insane. The only thing that I've eaten today is um, toast. So, um, very, very weird. But... I do have some good Gruyere downstairs. Very similar to what he's eating. So I'm like, mm, maybe later. <laughs> I might have that a little later. But um, anyway, um, that's my symptom. I mean, just being high as fuck today is my ascension symptom for the day. Not all in all, not a bad one. 
a lot of people have been reporting that, that they feel like really high out of nowhere, even unprovoked, (laughs) not taking anything, not doing anything. All I did was this manifestation meditation. And in fact, all in the beginning, all it was, was I'm just clearing my chakras out. And I decided to do it with the energy and color of gold. And I don't mean like a golden yellow color. I mean like actual gold. I imagined real metallic gold. Because I was thinking about alchemy and I was thinking about the high vibrational energy of gold. And I thought, okay, that might be a fun one to do. So I imagined gold and I imagined it. um, And I just kept doing this over and over in my um, aura. And all of a sudden, I just got really high, dude. Just like out of nowhere. But I, I, I set off. I can't even. If you don't know what a toric field is, you're going to have to look it up. But it's kind of like the shape of a donut, right? So, um, in a way, and it's like, um, and maybe a donut is a toric field. Okay, that's hilarious. That's like, that's like coffee humor, coffee and donut, morning humor for quantum physicists. (laughs) Oh, can you hand me one of those pink torque fields over there? Sure. Why not? (laughs) Yeah, I'm like high as hell, dude. Okay. So I'm trying to get through this without having to stop and start over again. Seriously, I might release that footage next year. I don't know. (laughs) I mean, really, it was worse than I am right now, way worse. So, all right. So doing this, see, and when I think about this meditation that I did, I get higher. It's very strange, but it, a torque field, like when you, when you take, you imagine the, the tube with which your Kundalini runs up through your spine and you, you see your seven chakras and the energy is going up, 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 up your spine and through all of your chakras and all the way up to the 12th chakra and you have all 12 chakras lit up and you, and then from the bottom up, you pour out gold, liquid, like gold, like actual, imagine like the metallic gold, that energy. That's what I did. And I just felt like, um, it was like kind of, um, a, it was almost like a a sound, but an astral sound that I heard. It was like a machine and it just like, it was like a, a machine locking in and being solid and stable. It was like, and it was just like that click. It was like a click. And it was like, all of a sudden I felt this energy going around me spinning really fast and it was like I locked in a, a quantum toric field, like a, and I don't know if it's a portal. I don't know what it is, but it is really affecting my mind right now. <clears throat> if you guys try it, let me know what happens. And if I, if the results of the things I was trying to manifest, if it occurs, I'll let you know, um, by next week. But, um, yeah, I don't know. And I've been feeling the energy in my spine. I don't know if you guys have been feeling like a compression energy in your spine, but, um, there's some powerful energy going on right now in the world. We're being bombarded by the cosmic energy and it's the 31st. So today's the last day you can nominate me by the way, for the people's choice podcast award. If you haven't nominated me, please go do so. Cause it's only a couple hours left, but, um, also, and tomorrow is August 1st, which means my new special right now today, if you still order between now and midnight, wherever you are, in fact, between now and Monday, I will still extend the July special. If you want me to do a psychic medium reading for you. It's normally $111, 111, but the July special was $77. And that ends tomorrow when it becomes $88. But I tell you what, I will extend it through the weekend and then Monday it becomes $88. So 
If you want a psychic medium reading, uh, if you want me to channel God for you, I could channel your holy guardian angel, your higher self, any of your dead relatives that wish to speak to you because everyone has a choice. I don't conjure people unless they want to be conjured. <laughs> okay, I'm not actually conjuring people. I'm kidding about that. But um, I will, you know, have a conversation with anybody on your behalf. I record it live. I send you the clip. It's usually about an hour long. And they, it's just, a, you know, you, you give me the questions. I ask the people. They tell me the answer. And I telepathically channel your people for you. But this could be Jesus. It could be anybody you want to talk to. People throughout history. You know, even Robin Williams might be available to you if he's interested. You know, you can ask, I can ask him for you on your behalf. And that's one of the strange things I do is I, I psychically channel people. You know, I'm a psychic medium. So, um, you know, let me know. Any masters, spiritual masters, Paramahansa... Yogananda, or even Ashtar Shirhan, if you want to talk to ETs or the Pleiadians. And I normally, like I said, $111, but my July special is $77, and in August it's going to be $88, starting on Monday, $88, okay? I'm going to extend the $77 for July. Anyway, there you go with that, okay? So, yeah, blessings, guys. Blessings, blessings. I'm trying to think. If you have food, that's a blessing. If it's organic, that's a blessing. If it's fresh, that's a blessing. If you have furniture in your home, a lot of people own a home without furniture. So if you don't even own anything furniture-wise, that's a blessing. Um, I just want you guys to be aware of the blessings. And, you know, this golden meditation I just told you about. This is another way to manifest your blessings as well. I mean, this torque field thing that, I mean, that was crazy. I heard it astrally click in place and I feel it going. I feel like I'm inside of a machine right now, but I created it with my mind, you know, like I connected the dots, which are the uh, chakras. I know it sounds crazy, but I wish I could show you. I mean, right now I am transmitting to those of you who have your third eye open. You can receive this right now. It's literally a metallic gold toric field around me. It's not terribly shiny. It's actually kind of a matte gold is what it looks like to me. But it's definitely gold just like you would find it right out of a river not like extra polished or anything and there is some being in my room right here right next to me and who are you this thing is like really close to me are you a ET hi oh you're one of the tall white ETs very nice do you want to say anything on my recording if enough I can't hear you maybe my people can hear you my listeners I think he just said something. That'd be really crazy to play this back later and find out that it actually that you actually showed up. Is there anything you wish to say to my people while you're here? Okay, he's saying yes, there is. Okay, well, um, are you of the light? He says yes, of course. Are you part of the Galactic Federation? Are you saying no? Yeah, he says no. <coughs> <coughs> is there any warning you want to give us? He says, no. <coughs> oh my God, that pepper flavor in my mouth is coming back. Crazy. All right, so what do you wish to tell us, Ta White Being? Do you say your name is Ta Ri? Oh, you came to see me before. Okay, now this, this guy came and watched me a couple weeks ago while I was in the kitchen cooking, doing my kitchen witchery which yesterday's show was about that, by the way. And um, he came to me before, Tari. He's a tall white uh, being, alien, uh, ET, sorry, extraterrestrial. And also, you're an interdimensional. Okay, so you're saying the 9th and the 7th? 9th and 11th, okay. He just says, yes, I exist uh, in 
interdimensionally on the ninth and the eleventh dimension. Nice. Okay, is there anything you want to say to anyone? He says, keep going. We're seeing a blue light emitted from your planet and... Okay, and what? And what that means is it is an exponential increase in growth of the light consciousness or the consciousness of light. It's like a blue flame and it is very, very bright. And this is an energy and energetic being emitted from your planet at this time in the dimension in which you're in. Many of you are getting ready to be locked into a much higher power and a much higher authority. A lot of you will drop your fears coming very soon. Your energy fields are calibrating to the light of the one will and the love of the one will. The divine energy that flows through all of us, regardless of where we're at in the matrix cube of the universe. We wish to let it be known that we have a great deal of fondness and fascination by your kind. And we send you love. We send you light. We wish for your greatest happiness and harmony and harmonic resonance to come to pass quickly so that you can stabilize in the energy of love and light. And I'm just feeling like a liquidy energy from them. Kind of a very pale blue. So you're showing me the ether? Okay, they're saying they're showing me the ether. This is the ether, if you can imagine, it's like a a pale liquid blue. It's like a sky blue color almost. Or an electric blue mixed with white and, and melding into each other, but not quite mixing. And he says, the, he says, this is ether. If you imagine like the, you know, in the ethereal realms, the aether, A-E-T-H-E-R, like what they used to call it back in the olden days. <laughs> He's saying, literally breathe into, imagine you have like a, have it in your hand, breathe into it. And you say, take it into our hearts with our heart's desire and imagine that it's pouring out of every individual cell in streams of light like so many rays of sunshine and you radiate that which you wish to have your desire and that's going to bring to you the thing that you want he says I'm sorry sorry like T-S-A-R-E-E sorry Tari is it Tari sorry sorry Tari to sorry, like that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> to sorry. Thank you so much. He's one of my guides. I have an ET guide. He's freaking awesome. I love you, to sorry. Thank you so much. And he says he's he says blessings. Have a good evening. Namaste. Namaste for you and, and transmission. Wow. Well, it's always fun when an alien stops by to give a quick little benefit to your uh, introduction of your podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it's not an everyday occurrence, but you guys know my life. It's magical and wild and psychedelic as fuck. So, um, well, that was fun. Really strange. Okay. There it is. Um... Man, it's only been 23 minutes. Usually I'm, I have so much to say. Oh, and I don't know what happened to my glasses. Well, we're going to have to get through this without the glasses, I think. (laughs) I think I left them downstairs. All right. So I just looked up and it's 717. 
p.m. All right. Let's just get into it, guys. Um, This is going to be a shorter introduction than normal. That was wild. I mean, seriously, I'm, I, I started calling serious attention to material manifestation of things and money today. I've been really, really thinking hard on this stuff today. And as a result, I mean, I feel high as hell because I've been doing this meditation today and, um, it's really deep. Uh, Hopefully you guys can feel the energy of it. I hope that we all get rich with this energy. I hope you could feel it. I really feel like something's going to happen from it. If it does, for sure, I'm going to let you know. (laughs) Okay, let's just do it. Let's go to spaceweather.com. Current solar wind speed is 342.2 kilometers per second. Looks like there's uh, been a couple potential x-ray solar flares headed our way. I don't know when. It's hard to read on this website why but there are two sunspots <clears throat> that are headed I mean are facing us one is in the the north west hemisphere of the sun and one is in the southeast hemisphere of the sun and we're definitely in solar cycle 25 now both of these sunspots are in solar cycle 25 which is good to know they say, don't let the solar minimum fool you. The solar minimum superstorm of 1903. Um, <clears throat> so they're talking about, they say, the sun can throw a major tantrum during a quiet phase of the 11-year solar cycle. That's a conclusion in a new study published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. They said, in late October 1903, one of the strongest solar storms in modern history hit earth, say the lead authors of the study, Hisashi Hayakawa from Osaka University, Japan, and Paulo Ribeiro um, from Coimbra University in Portugal. The timing of the storm, interestingly, parallels where we are now, near solar minimum, just a week, just after a week solar cycle. And the 1903 event wasn't always recognized as a great storm, Hayakawa and colleagues took an interest in it because of what happened when the storm hit in magnetic observatories around the world. Pens scrabbling across paper chart recorders literally flew off the scales, overwhelmed by the disturbance. That's the kind of thing that superstorms do. So the researchers secured historical records for clues, and they found four magnetic observatories in Portugal, India, Mexico and China, where the readings were whole. Using those data, they collected the size of the storm. It was big, says Hayakawa. The 1903 storm ranks sixth in the list of known geomagnetic storms since the year 1850, just below the extreme storm of March 1989, which blacked out the province of Quebec. Wow. That's, that's a lot. So if you want to read the rest of this article, I'm not going to read it, but it talks about all the other things that happened during the storm. That's pretty crazy. Uh, but as far as the solar wind coming out of the coronal holes of the sun, there is a north, uh, one in the very dead center, um, in the north of the sun. And it still says August 20, August 2nd and August 3rd. So basically Sunday and Monday, we're going to be hit with solar storms. And right now, as far as the Ulu neutron counts are concerned, they are high, and there's been a 0.7% change, um, you know, in the plus direction in the past 48 hours. The noctilucent clouds are in full swing. You can check them out. Just go outside, and if the sky seems to be glowing, then, uh, well, that's a noctilucent cloud. There's always beautiful pictures here on spaceweather.com, by the way. Comet Neowise can only be seen with a telescope now. If you've missed it with the naked eye, you could still go to YouTube as well as spaceweather.com and check out all the images from this beautiful comet. Um, Let's see. And according to the 
All Sky Fireball Network and NASA's All Sky Cameras, 35 fireballs have exploded over the United States today. <laughs> 35. This is crazy. Crazy trajectories from all over the place. Very, very strange. 19 of them were sporadic. Seven were from the Perseids. Six are Southern Delta Aquarids. Two are Alpha Capricornids. And one is a Northern Delta Aquarid. So <clears throat> that is our spaceweather.com uh, for the day. So I'm really glad that that pepper went out of my throat. That was crazy. <clears throat> I'm still kind of like congested from it though. Very odd, very odd thing. Speaking of 17, a minute ago I said 717. 17 is the number of the Schumann resonance. That's the high point in the past 24 hours from disclosurenews.it. 17. That's very, very low, isn't it? I don't know what exactly it is in other parts of the world, but I do know what exactly it was in other parts of the world at the 2300 hour of Wednesday. So according to heartmath.org, and we're going to go right here right now to check it out. Ugh, this website is ridiculously hard. I had to queue it up and then I had to re-record the beginning of this. And uh, hold on a minute. Let me get this ready. All right, there we go. I got it. Finally. Okay. <clears throat> Boy, that is so strange. This is getting, this, things have gotten really strange, haven't they? Really, really weird. Are, are any of you like literally feeling what it's like to be in other people's bodies like I am? I mean, is this the next step, step for humanity or am I just being extra sensitive with a psychic ability? It is really weird. <clears throat> I'm such an empath anyway, and it's just, this is like beyond empathy though. It's like, it's like I'm literally sharing molecules with him. Literally, I'm, I'm like, I have like, like there's a twin flame particle of pepper in my <laughs> mouth right now. <clears throat> I came back again. This is very strange. Really weird. Cause like I said, the only thing I've had today, I just had toast and coffee. I didn't actually eat a meal yet, like a big meal or anything. Not, not even a little bit of pepper. That's freaking me out. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. <clears throat> Wednesday, July 29th at, oh, why does it say the 1200 hour a second ago? It was at the 2300 hour. Here we go. Now I have the 2300 hour. Oh, I'm glad. Woo, glad I, I moved it back up again because boy, <clears throat> these numbers are huge. So at that time in California, the Schumann resonance was 121 Hertz frequency. In Hofuf, Saudi Arabia, that they remain at zero. Don't know why. In Lithuania, they were at 191 hertz frequency. And Alberta, Canada, not to be outdone by anyone today, is at 375 hertz frequency on the Schumann resonance scale. That's huge. Remember, 40 is the fifth dimension. They're at 375. Seriously, if someone has a very low vibration and they drove to Alberta, Canada... Maybe it just looked like a big hole. <laughs> Maybe it looked like a big toric field. I don't know. It's it just like Albert is gone. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's just a bunch of white vibrating light. I don't know. 375 hertz frequency. Can you imagine? They're vibing really high in Alberta, Canada. In fact, if you are in Alberta, Canada and you can hear this, please DM me on... Um, Instagram at mermaid girl 888. I want to hear what does it feel like to be there? Do you notice a difference? Have you noticed the high vibrations there lately? I mean, are you exhausted or are you thrilled? Are you like jumping off, bouncing off the walls with this energy? I want to know what it feels like to be in such a high vibration. I have no idea what Ecuador is, but the Schumann resonance in Alberta, Canada, 375. Damn, that's high. 
<clears throat> Northland, New Zealand, at that time, they were at 74 hertz frequency. And in Hulului, South Africa, they were at 119 hertz frequency. Which is, again, <laughs> nothing to sneeze at because that's really, um, that's really high as well. <clears throat> this is, like, crazy. I'm, like, suddenly out of nowhere congested like crazy. But um, I'm going to push forward and get this done today. I want to get this out um, at a decent hour for you guys. Um, well, because you need a vote for me. I want to remind you that one last reminder. And also want to get it out so that you guys can, um, you know, get a reading. If you have been wanting to, now's the time to do it. <coughs> starting Monday, the, the price is $88. And it's supposed to be starting tomorrow. So extending the deal for you uh, at 77 now. And you could PayPal me at um, metaphysicalsoulspeak at gmail.com is how you PayPal me um, to get a reading. And you got to let me know. And you've got to DM me also on Instagram, by the way, because I don't get my emails from metaphysicalsoulspeak at gmail.com right now. Long story, but I'm working on all this. I have a lot of electronic issues, so... I need a volunteer. I need a volunteer that lives in Cuenca that could come over and help me with all this stuff. But, all right, I digress. <laughs> Not that that's going to happen. That's like a fantasy right there. Getting that kind of help here. Because <laughs> what are the odds anyone in Cuenca is even listening to me, right? I don't know. Maybe. Um, all right, this is where we're at. In a course in miracles. And you can find this website at acim.org. This is the website for the Foundation for Inner Peace. And what this is, is basically a lady sat down to write the great American novel. She was a scientist and did not believe in God, but was raised in the Jewish faith. And as she sat down at her typewriter to write this book, uh, that she wanted to write. Uh, instead, A Course in Miracles was channeled through her by Jesus himself because he wants to help unravel a lot of the things that religion has done to people. And he wants you to know what he wanted you to know back then and no one got it. <laughs> no one understood how he's trying to teach us how to manifest stuff. But he came back to uh, help us now and this is how we did it but with a course in miracles now I know people who have taken this course and had a bunch of miracles in their life that's why I'm reading this to you I wish for you to have miracles in your life as well so <clears throat> without further ado here's the lesson for the day and I do highly encourage you by the way to go get an app, you know, Course in Miracles app, because you might want to start this from, you could start it on any day of the year, it doesn't matter, but you might want to start it for yourself and read all of, all of the lessons and really do the work <clears throat> of starting to get to know them because they're very, very good. It's going to help you in many, many ways. And, um, like, I mean, my friend told me he's seen a man fall in love that, he thought would never ever and he also had a friend who had uh, warts on his hands because he felt unworthy as a human being after he took a course in miracles one day he was in the shower and the warts just peeled off his hands and all of a sudden he never again had another wart <clears throat> what, and according to like Louise L. Hay warts are uh, little bits of self-hatred if you hate yourself you'll, you'll get warts on your hands I thought that was strange now, I, I don't know. Sometimes I think a wart is just a wart. Um, yeah, I, I've had a plantar wart on the bottom of my foot since I was a teenager. And I just, it's like I, I've done all the treatments and it's still there. And I don't know, does that mean I hate myself or that part of my foot? I don't think so. So you got to take everything you hear with a grain of salt, of course. <clears throat> it might apply to you or it might not. You know, I think sometimes it's just a virus you can't get rid of, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, you gotta take it all with a grain of salt, but, but that is a miracle. And there's other people who, um, had their sight completely restored 
you know, they were blind fully and now they can see a lot of stories. If you look on Google, in fact, maybe I'll do, you know, that's, that would be an excellent, uh, episode to do is all of the miracles that people have, uh, gotten with a course of miracles course. So that might be something, right? All right. Anyway. All right. Now, now (laughs) without further ado, let's get into lesson 346. Today, the peace of God envelops me and I forget all things except his love. Today, the peace of God envelops me and I forget all things except his love. Father, I wake today with miracles connect, correcting my perception of all things. And so begins the day I share with you as I share eternity, for time has stepped aside today. I do not seek the things of time, and so I will not look upon them. What I seek today transcends all laws of time and things perceived in time. I would forget all things except your love. I would abide in you and know that and know no laws except your law of love. I would abide in you and know no laws except your law of love. And I would find the peace which you created for your son, forgetting all the foolish toys I made, and as I behold your glory and my own. And when the evening comes today, we will remember nothing but the peace of God. For we will learn today what peace is ours when we forget all things except God's love. And I feel another meditation coming on, don't you? <laughs> That's what I want to do. I want to sit and meditate for like 20 minutes and just abide in the love of God and nothing else. Just bask in the glow of that. I think maybe that's a secret to all things. I love this lesson so much. All right, again, the main thought for this lesson, lesson 346, is this. Today the peace of God envelops me, and I forget all things except his love. All right, that's it for uh, the introduction. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break, and when I come back, it's another edition of the Earth Changes Report. And the weekly weird world news coming up right after these two messages. It's that time of year, guys. Finally. OMG. I am up for not only one, but two People's Choice Podcast Awards this year. I had no idea. I just found out. Okay, the voting starts today, July 1st, and goes through the 31st of July. And I need you guys to nominate my podcast. This is how you do it. Go to podcastawards.com and you have to sign up in order to nominate me, in order to vote, and you have to go to the very first category at the top, and it's the Adam Curry's People's Choice Podcast Award. And I'm way down on the list because, you know, M, Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast. And you just click that. And then when you're done with that section, you go to the religion and spirituality category. And again, cast your vote for Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast. And then you have to go way at the bottom, at the bottom part of the page and 
say, save my nominations. And that's it. It's that simple. It takes less than two minutes, probably one minute if you have high speed internet, of course. It's not that much. You can even do this on your phone. It's super, super simple. I voted for myself on my tablet. OMG. <laughs> So thank you for your continued support and listenership and voting for this show, because by doing so, you're keeping the show alive and we're getting the word out so that other people can benefit from my expertise. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's high time you did. It is the absolute easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's absolutely free. Second of all, they have creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. You guys have known that I've been doing this for eight months using the Anchor.fm app right on my cell phone, and I have done it everywhere, right? I have recorded this in my living room, my bedroom, little cafes in Quito, Ecuador, all over Cuenca. It's so absolutely easy to make your podcast and editing is just a snap. Anchor also will distribute your podcast for you. And it took me about two and a half months to become syndicated. And now I'm available on Spotify, Apple podcast, and many more and so can you you can make money from your podcast also and there's no minimum requirement you get paid from your very first listener it is everything that you need to make a podcast all in one place so please if you are interested in making a podcast of your very own do not hesitate to start with anchor Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Future is that earth. We need to protect 
it's our future. It's our Earth. We need to protect it for what it's worth. All right, guys, this is the Earth Changes Report, and we're going to follow that up with the weekly weird world news report. But first, we're going to start with Watchers.News, and we're going to start with what happened last Saturday on through today. So, of course, we're starting with Hurricane Douglas had had continued (laughs) west-northwest towards Hawaii, and they had a pre-landfall emergency warning issued. We'll see later what happened there, but I guess let's just send some sunshine and love to the people of Hawaii. I use these Earth Changes reports from Watchers.News to know who to pray for, basically. I send love and light to everybody on the planet all the time, but when I read these, I know who needs it the most, my attention and my love. And if you want to do that with me, yeah, go ahead. It's going to cost nothing but a few moments of your time. ESA's Sentinel-1 maps a 7.4 magnitude earthquake in Oaxaca, Mexico. And they map it from space. Wow. If you have an interest of looking at a map of of the earthquake... It was pretty interesting that they were able to do this from space. That's at watchers.news, and that's on uh, page three of the articles. If you listen to this over the weekend, probably page four by Monday, if um, you're hearing this later. Let's see. There was a strong 6.3 earthquake that hit South Sandwich Islands region. Where is South Sandwich? Is that off the coast of New Zealand? I have no idea. I remember hearing about Old Sandwich. (laughs) I think that's in New England and maybe possibly an old... It might be a made-up city that was in the TV show Weeds. (laughs) Love that show, by the way. All right. Study reveals South Atlantic magnetic anomaly is a recurring feature. Well, that's interesting. South Atlantic Magnetic Anomaly. Now, showing um, it is showing a map of the ocean, and I don't see exactly where, but that's interesting. A magnetic anomaly, huh? Well, we might want to come back to that. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, the next thing is a new Australasian model can forecast tropical cyclones four months ahead. Wow, in advance. Wow, Australasian model forecasts tropical cyclones four months in advance. That would be like super helpful, right? That's interesting. So it looks like they're mapping a lot of stuff from space. A lot of interesting developments as far as that is concerned. Okay, a comet interceptor, ESA, announces new space mission to intercept pristine comets. All right, I'll bite. I'm going to go see what that is. It, pristine comets. All right. Um, comprising three spacecraft, the mission will be the first to visit a truly pristine comet. Because these objects are difficult to spot until they're close to the sun... The idea is that the mission would launch to a parking orbit around the Lagrange Point L2 until an interesting pristine comet visits the inner solar system. It will then intersect the comet's orbit to study its nucleus, gases, dust, and plasma environment. The spacecraft will perform simultaneous observations from multiple points around the comet generating a 3D profile of the object. Pristine or dynamically new comets are entirely uncharted and make compelling targets for close-range spacecraft exploration to better understand the diversity and evolution of comets, according to Gunther Hassinger, ESA's Director of Science. 
It's very interesting. But what I don't understand, though, I guess because they were concerned about Neil Wise. Um, I don't know. They say Comet Neil Wise is on an almost parabolic orbit. And it was only detected in March of 2020. And because of its very fast, it is very fast and relatively far away, we cannot build a spacecraft to encounter it in time. But I am still wondering why they want to. Maybe they want to mine these things. What do you think? That's weird, right? Do they want to do some mining on the comets? Is that what this is about? It's very strange. I don't know. All right, let's just go to the next page. We have three pages get through, and we just finished the first page, so that's pretty going pretty fast. Uh, a magnitude 6.1 earthquake aftershock hits near the coast of Alaska Peninsula in the United States. So, wow, if the aftershock is 6.1, that's, that's pretty crazy. I don't know what the actual magnitude of the original quake was. That's crazy. Tropical Depression, Hannah, uh, barrels through Mexico and left 11 people dead or missing. Let's send some love and light to the people of Mexico. A lot of sunshine, actually, after that tropical depression. Sounds depressing. (laughs) Depression, Uh, get it. Uh, Severe flooding paralyzes Taif City in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Wow, severe flooding. That's crazy. Let's send them some sunshine, too. Coastal low prompts thousands of rescues in New South Wales as power has been disrupted to 15,000 properties in Australia. Wow. All right, well, let's send some, um, I guess by low, coastal low, I think they mean a storm. I don't know why they call the low L-O-W. Very strange. Let's just send them some sunshine to Australia, New South Wales. A rare, rare dark red noctilucent clouds have appeared over Sweden. That was on the 28th of July. I saw pictures of this on spaceweather.com. Remember the noctilucent clouds? It's when a couple kilometers up into our atmosphere, um, there's... Um, Oh, basically, it's being struck by cosmic radiation and space dust. And it's kind of sparking these glowing clouds. So late at night, the sky is glowing these wild blue colors. It's really incredible. It's like the sky in the movie Peter Pan. Remember that old animated film from from Disney? You know, when the sky was just such a beautiful cobalt blue, like glowing. Well, that's what's going on right now in the top half of the of the globe and now they have mapped rare dark red noctilucent clouds they they've appeared over sweden i don't know if they're still there but so now it's kind of glowing a purpley color it's like that blue and the red and it's mixing and in the picture it looks rather purple you can check this out on watchers.news all right the next story is this the mogami river has overflowed following a record downpour in Yamagata, Japan. So let's send them some sunshine. Most of this is basically sunshine needed around the globe. Where I live today was absolutely uh, raining, like coming down really hard. Tons of rain, unbelievable rainstorms today. And it was very dark, very cloudy, and very gray. It was a perfect day. I wish I would have had some hot chicken soup would have been good. But when I'm done with this, I'm going to have some chicken wings <laughs> and asparagus, as I mentioned earlier, I think. I think I did. I, maybe I mentioned it on the show. I don't know. But um, maybe it was just to my kid. I was like telling him, that's my big plan for today. <laughs> it's actually pretty keto. When you think about it, it's part of the keto diet, right? Just meat and vegetables. That's it. All right. The next, uh, this is a very sad story. It's about the bees. The bee population decline threatens major crop yields in the United States and also is threatening global food 
security. I don't know what we can do except send love to the bees, sign a lot of petitions against pesticide spraying. If the pesticides were eliminated from the United States, the bee population would come back. But then I'm worried about those those anti wasps, the anti bee wasps. Is that what they were? That came around a couple, or the murder, yeah, the murder hornet. They were hornets, not wasps. The murder hornets. They came up, and they're threatening the bees also. It just seems like we really are in the end times, guys. Let's just send love and light to the whole world, and especially to the bees themselves. Let's send them a lot of love. Be love. <laughs> Be love, beloveds. <laughs> All right, next story. Severe flood situation has continued in Bihar, in India, and nearly 4 million people have been affected by the severe flooding. So let's some sunshine and love to Bihar, India, as well. And again, and more deadly floods have hit South Korea's central and southern regions. So love and light and lots of sunshine to South Korea. An extremely elongated cloud has returned over Arcea Mons volcano in Mars, on Mars. You know, speaking of Mars, by the way, three countries have launched new missions to Mars this week in the past 72 hours, China, India, and the United States. I mean, at least I've read these stories, articles in the past uh, 72 hours that is really strange. Like why the sudden rush to get to Mars? I do not want to go to Mars. If God had wanted me to be on Mars, I would have been born on Mars. I am not interested in going to the quote unquote red planet, which I'm sure when you get there would be a not very pretty color brown. I'm sure it's not red the way that... They have always shown us, you know. Anyway, this rare elongated cloud. Do you guys suspect it's a cloud? I sure don't. I think it's an extraterrestrial vehicle. I I don't believe it's a cloud at all, just to be honest. Very strange, though, isn't it? The Bahamas uh, are now bracing for Hurricane Isaiah. Hurricane Isaiah. So, again... Sunshine, let's send sunshine to the Bahamas. Sunshine. Um, <laughs> now, no one can use more sunshine than Slovenia right now. As a violent hailstorm has hit central Slovenia, Europe's first giant hail event in 2020. So that's really crazy. Um, I'm going to go to this article and see what it says. Oh my gosh, yeah, this this guy's whole palm is covered by this, practically. It's covered by this uh, piece of hail. Ice stones up to four inches in diameter have left enormous damage along its path in what is now the first giant hailstorm event of 2020 in Europe. A large upper wave was moving across northern Europe while an associated diffuse cold front was extending towards the Alps. Moderate westerly winds over Slovenia created a moderate wind shear, generating environmental conditions that were conducive to support such severe storms. So they're calling it low-level conditions and revealed the classic moisture pooling which is moisture advection with the easterly flow towards the dynamic mountain range, according to severe weather Europe meteorologists. So, wow. Oh my gosh. These pictures are absolutely beautiful. Really incredible. Wow. Look with the volcano going off and the hailstorm in Slovenia. Wow. Looks like, Maybe it's the sun. It actually looks like a volcano. But you've got to see these pictures, guys. This is on um, 
the first page of Watchers.News. So, anyway, now our final story for the day is heavy rains and damaging floods and mudslides have hit western Georgia. Now, it doesn't say if it's Georgia the state or Georgia the country, which is also very strange why they would not say it in the headline. I don't know. Hold on. It still doesn't say. I'm like, I went to the article and it just says in the upper Racha province. Okay, so it's the country, not... Alright, so now we know where to send the love and the light. And the sunshine, once again. I mean, my god. Lot, so pretty much around the world, it's just wet and rainy and floody and hailstormy. And then earthquakes. I don't know what to do about the earthquakes except just to send love towards the people that have suffered from the earthquakes, but, um, it's very strange. I don't know. Um, a lot of, a lot of really weird news, um, has come down the pike this week. You know, the Pentagon announcement from last, from the past week or week and a half, I guess. And the CIA has released a bunch of freedom of information documents on, all kinds of stuff, um, astral projection and their psychic experiments and how to manifest stuff rapidly and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to try to see if I can't put together a show for next week surrounding these documents, provided I could find them. My friend sent me a link and I just can't uh, click all the way through for some reason. It's not a clickable link. It's like it shows the, the letters at the link. I could type it in, but I don't know. I really want to find some of these documents. It would be nice if I could put together a series, you know, so I'm going to, I'm, I'm looking into that, but I mean, those are the more stranger, just mainstream stories, not even going to AD or coast to coast AM, but, um, yeah, a lot of really, really weird news. Like Trump um, talking about the great credibility of a woman who believes that all vaccinations are created from alien DNA. And he's saying her science is sound. And I don't know if she's, she's just a crazy witch doctor or something. I don't even know. It was very strange. And for whatever reason, she ended up on a panel and her credentials are not very good or something. And, and she's besides just absolutely crazy. And, um, he was saying that her science is sound. That was a weird story. And then he says, I don't know anything about her. It's just the one thing she was saying sounded good. You know, basically he just spouts off his mouth without knowing what he's talking about, you know, as per usual. But yeah, the, a lot of really strange stories this week that were normal, but I'm going to, I'm going to pause this for a second and go find the odd ones, the really strange stories for the week for our weekly weird world news report. Oh yeah. I just remembered this is the really strange story of the week about the mysterious seeds that have shown up to thousands and thousands and thousands of people's houses randomly. This is a really weird one. Mysterious unsolicited seeds after all 50 states issue warnings. Or U.S., I'm sorry, USDA identifies (laughs) some of the mysterious unsolicited seeds after all 50 states issue warnings. Now, did you hear this? This is crazy. People who made um, orders that came from Amazon or China, um, through various means, um, months and months after they did that, suddenly they've gotten mysterious packets of seeds in the mail. People are freaking out. They're like, I want to burn the seeds. I don't know what they are. And it's like, you know what? You should just identify it. You know, go find a seed 
identifier app or something and see if you can't figure out what they are. Maybe they're normal. Maybe they're fine, right? Maybe they're just a gift, but it's a weird, really weird thing that just started happening. So the U.S. Department of Agriculture has identified 14 different kinds of seeds in the mysterious packages that appear to have been sent unsolicited from China to people around the country. And the country they mean is the United States. This is a USA Today article. So obviously this is happening in the United States from China. So is this a Trojan horse? Is this a mysterious gift? Is this a hoax? What is this? It's it's weird, right? Like it, it's just this, it's mind boggling. Maybe they're just being sweet. Maybe they want future business. I don't know. But it says all 50 states now have issued warnings about the packages, some of which contain flowering plants like morning glory. Oh, morning glories are awesome. They're climbing vine plants. I don't recommend planting them near a tree because eventually they might hurt the tree. But if you could plant them next to a telephone pole, they'll climb up and they're absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful blue, purpley blue flowers. I love morning glories. But also, some of these flowering plants are hibiscus and roses. According to Osama El Lisi, with a plant protection program of the USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. LSC said other packages containing vegetables like cabbage, herbs, including mint, sage, rosemary, and lavender. This is just a subset of the samples we've collected so far, he said Wednesday. A spokesperson for the USDA said the department is urging anyone who receives the packages not to plant them and to contact their state plant regulatory official and keep the seeds and packaging, including the mailing label, until they receive further instruction. Now at this time, we don't have any evidence indicating that this is something other than a brushing scam where people receive unsolicited items from a seller who then posts false customer reviews to boost their sales, the statement said. The USDA is currently collecting seed packages from recipients and will test the contents and determine if they contain anything that could be of concern to U.S. agriculture or the environment. Robin Prusner, a state seed control official at the Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship in Iowa, told Reuters that she's concerned the seeds may have been coated with something possibly an insecticide or fungicide that could damage crops. I've had people describe to me that the seeds are coated with something purple. I haven't had it in my hands yet, but it sounds an awful lot like a seed treatment, she told the outlet. Sid Miller, Texas Agriculture Commissioner, warned the packages could contain harmful invasive species to be otherwise unsafe, according to a release. Invasive species are organisms not native to a certain region. The introduction of invasive species could cause the destruction of native crops, introduce diseases to native plants, and could be dangerous to livestock. An invasive plant species might not sound threatening, but the small invaders could destroy Texas agriculture, Miller said in the release. The Texas Department of Agriculture has been working closely with the USDA to analyze these unknown seeds so we can protect Texas residents. Some of the packages were labeled as jewelry and may have Chinese writing on them, according to the agriculture officials. This is just like getting weirder and weirder, isn't it? This is like the most insane story. Um, really, really weird. So, I don't know. Uh... Let's see. Uh, Lori Cully, who lives in Tool, Idaho, or not Idaho, I'm sorry, Tool, Utah, told Fox 13 that she was excited to find two small packages in her mailbox that appeared to contain earrings. I opened them up and they were seeds, Cully said. Obviously, they're not jewelry. 
Kali told the outlet she posted about the strange incident on Facebook, and at least 40 people also reached out to her saying something similar happened to them. That is absolutely bizarre, isn't it? Like, really, what the heck is going on? I, you know, brushing scam sounds weird, and I don't think that's quite it. I, I don't understand what exactly is happening, but I don't know. It's it's weird, isn't it? I, I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, now I'm going to go look at Audi or something, but I wanted to tell you about that. I just, I was getting ready to do the Audi thing or, or maybe I'm going to look, see the best articles for today, maybe Metro UK or the mirror is always fun, but uh, these mysterious seeds though, like what is the purple coating on them? I I read another article earlier today that they started to plant them and they don't appear to have anything weird about them. They're just normal seeds, just random seeds. I mean, I feel like why can't you just lie about the reviews? Why do you have to mail them out to get the reviews? Brushing scam sounds weird. I, I don't know. What if there's nanotechnology inside the seeds? And that's how the Chinese will spy on us, the people who plant the seeds. I'm just kidding. That's probably not true. What a weird thing to have happen. It's like a wonderful, generous, secret Trojan horse creepy thing that happened. I, You know, how do you think of it? What do you guys think about that? Let me know. If anyone tells me what you think about it over the weekend, I'll, I will say on Monday what your guys' thoughts are on this one. I did read another article, a third article yet on this, that this has happened not only in the United States, but throughout Europe as well. I mean, and have, have you received seeds in the mail? If you've received any seeds, I want you to tell me. Maybe if you could, if you could find a seed identifier app and identify the seeds and then let me know, that would be very interesting. I would love to show or tell the world your story because... This is odd. This stuff is, this is very weird. All right, let me go check out some more strange news. Hold on. It was hard for me to find some articles that weren't just strange, like strange in the weirdest, of, I, I don't know, strange in the weirdest ways. That It sounds exactly like what we want. Some of these articles were not all that strange. They, they were weird in the fact that they were not that weird. So I had to go through like several websites. This one is the one that's kind of the most promising this week. UPI.com forward slash odd underscore news. So basically the odd news from UPI.com. I'm just going to give you guys the headlines. If it looks really interesting, I may just go do the whole, read the whole article. Police chase a loose steer. Through Alberta City for 90 minutes. Well, if this is Alberta, Canada, well, they have like 375 hertz frequency Schumann resonance. Could explain the strange behavior of the steer, right? The steer is a bull, a male cow. <laughs> or is a cow a female bull? Okay. I moving on. I don't know. I'm not a farm person. All right. California woman who is 99 years old becomes the world's oldest pilot and flight instructor. Well, that's cool. God bless her. That's awesome. An African ball python is on the loose in Manitoba, Canada. If you want to see a picture of it, it's slithering on down the sidewalk, just kind of taking itself on a walk apparently <laughs> that's at upi.com if you want to check it out the odd news section of the upi an australian woman's 1.43 million dollar lottery jackpot now marks her second major win i think i would like to go rub her head and hope her luck rubs off on my hand <laughs> i'll take my hand 
down to her local lottery <laughs> and play it. I, I want her secret. Don't you want her secret? Her She won two major lottery wins. That's crazy. A serial escape artist bear, Papillon, is on the loose again in Italy. That's hilarious. Papillon is how you say butterfly in French. But there's also a very famous movie about a man who escaped escaped a, a, a very high security prison and his name was Papillon. I remember in the 1970s, late 70s, maybe early 80s. I think, it, you know, about that time, this movie Papillon came out. So interesting. So a bear who is an escape artist <laughs> repeatedly is on the loose and they call him Papillon. That's really cute. I hope this time he, he gets to be free. In Missouri, a police diving team had to locate a rafter's prosthetic leg. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Oh, I can't even imagine. Oh my God. But at least they located it. Prosthetic legs are expensive. So a rafter lost his leg and Missouri police diving team. Well, at least the police are doing something good for their money. That's a, that's a positive story about the police like that. Australia Zoo's 18-foot, 8-inch giraffe has been declared as the world's tallest giraffe. Well, good for you, Australia Zoo. <laughs> 18 feet, 8 inches. That is huge. That's amazing. Uh, a man visits 40 stores to find the sole remaining $5 million scratch-off prize. Doesn't say what country, but wow. Well, you know, we don't have... Um, no one has jobs anymore, right? Like, are we all just at home playing the lottery? I'm just kidding. A lot of people do work, and a lot of people are hoping to get back to work soon. Coronavirus is crazy, but good for him. Wow, $5 million scratch off. I can't even imagine. That's awesome. Good for him. A baby alligator has made an unusual visit to a South Carolina beach. Oh, wow. Yeah, alligators aren't usually that far north. They're usually just in Florida, right? And an escaped bison has wandered, or bison, more than one. They have wandered through three miles of Washington neighborhoods. I can't even imagine just, like, looking out the window and here comes some bison going by your window down the street. That's crazy. Bison are really beautiful. I love I love the bison. This is, again, on UPI.com if you want to go check this out. It's a pretty cool picture of the bison. I like it. All right, can't say enough. Can't say bison enough. Love that word. (laughs) A UAE, United Arab Emirates soccer player, has now broken the Guinness Book of World Records for his hot stepper tricks with a soccer ball. That's interesting. Good for him. He just won a Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, now this one, we're going to have to read this one. This is crazy. Domino's New Zealand has pulled promotion, giving its free pizzas to Karen's. Why would they do that? It's just strange. Why, why, why? All right. It says, uh, the New Zealand wing of pizza chain Domino's has backtracked on a promotion offering free pizzas to customers named Karen that are not, well, Karens. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know, that's not a bad idea because not everyone named Karen is an actual (laughs) Karen, right? The New Zealand promotion and an identical offer in Australia offered free pizza to women who were named Karen, but don't conform to the stereotypes of a Karen, which is basically in its caned prominence online as a pejorative. 
For white women who act entitled and insensitive in public, often in the context of racism or refusal, let's see, what does it say? Refusal to wear a face mask to protect people from COVID-19. The promotion called on customers named Karen to fill out an application and 100 entries would be selected for free pizza. Domino's New Zealand canceled the promotion after sharp online backlash called on the chain to instead offer free pizza to racial minorities or people who have been economically impacted by COVID-19. Well, you know what, guys? Newsflash. Black people could be named Karen, too, right? I mean, I don't think it was four people that were only white named Karen. Very strange. And maybe there are people that are impacted by COVID-19. They say, we wanted to bring a smile to customers who are doing the right thing. Karen, the nurse, Karen, the teacher, Karen, the mom, the chain said in a Facebook post. The post, which apologized for the promotion, said people interpreted this in a different way than we intended. We appreciated how this has happened and we've listened. So we've removed the post. So the Australian version of the promotion did remain active on Thursday. (laughs) And they say, at Domino's, we know there's plenty of Australians named Karen that aren't well Karens, and we want to send some free pizza their way. So it's kind of a cute promotion, and it was just totally taken in the wrong context. So, well, there you have it. Here's the next story. A lost ring has found been found wrapped around a garlic plant months later. Oh my God, can you imagine how crazy would that be? Okay, let's read that one. That sounds strange. All right, so here is this story again from UPI.com. A ring that slipped from a main girl's finger while she was planting a garden turned up nine months later wrapped around a piece of garlic. Now, Madison Cooper is 12 years old. You know what? I think I used to know a, a Madison Cooper. That's strange. In, in fact, I haven't seen her since she was 12. Ugh, even stranger. Anyway, she said she lost the ring while planting garlic at the Chinawanki, I'm not saying that right, I'm sure, foundation in Wicaset in October. The ring had been a gift to her grandmother, Leonita Perry, from her late grandfather in 2012, and Perry had given the ring to Cooper after the grandfather's death. It was a Valentine's Day gift from my husband back in 2012. She really wanted the ring because her and Papa were really close, so I gave it to her, Perry told the, the WCSH TV. When she, when she told me she lost it, it was heartbreaking, but things happened and, well, it wasn't her fault. The family never expected to see this ring again. But nine months later, Hannah Marshall, a Chawanki Foundation outdoor educator, was harvesting the garlic and spotted something shiny on one of the plants. I was sent out to harvest the garlic. I pulled up one of the final plants. I saw something shiny, shiny around the bottom. And at first I thought, it must be trash, Marshall said to WGME TV. She said she was shocked to see it was a ring wrapped around the plant. It was a total coincidence that the garlic kind of captured the ring as it grew through the straw that helped to put it, that they helped put down. Oh, I see the straw. Okay, yeah, straw is just to keep, you put um, old straw over um, to keep the um, weeds from coming up. I'm like, what straw? I was thinking plastic straw. They mean like, you know, straw that horses eat kind of straw. Anyway, Perry said the ring's return was a good omen. When the call came, it was 23 months after the day that he passed away. So it was like an omen. It was meant to be, and she was meant to get that ring back. I don't know if that's an omen. 23 months after the day he passed away. Exactly. Maybe. I don't know. 23 is kind of a magical number. Maybe it means something to them more than what they explained in the article. 
Wow, long lost sisters have reunited more than 50 years later thanks to COVID-19. Well, we might have to check that article out. That is interesting. Okay. A pair of Nebraska sisters who had not seen each other in more than 50 years were reunited when one ended up as the other's medication aid because she was recovering from COVID-19. Wow. Bev Borrow, 53, a medication aide at Dunklau Gardens in Fremont, said that she was looking over her patient list when she quickly recognized the name of Doris Crippen, 73, the sister she had been trying to locate for years. Crippen had been hospitalized at Nebraska Medicine for more than a month while recovering from COVID-19 and a broken arm sustained in a fall, resulting from the illness. Oh my God, that's crazy. Borrow said she used a whiteboard to communicate with Crippen, who is hard of hearing, and they quickly confirmed that they shared the same father, Wendell Huffman. Crippen and Borrow, who who have different mothers, were raised in separate homes, and Borrow ended up in a foster care system when she was less than six months old, before eventually being adopted. Crippen was the first of Huffman's 10 children with three different mothers, and Bora was the youngest. The women said they had been searching for one another for years. They even knew each other's names, but were never able to find contact information. Crippen said she now considers her brush with coronavirus to be a blessing. I am the happiest person in the world, Crippen told the Washington Post. I cannot believe I finally found my sister. That is really trippy. Isn't that trippy? All right, the next story. A man has biked more than 7,031 miles in 30 days and broke a world record. That's cool. Good for him. A bear has been seen to have been wheeling a Florida man's trash can back up his driveway. I I don't know, guys. I have to read it. I love bears. I have to read this story. This is crazy. (laughs) A Florida man uh, shared security camera footage of a bear wheeling around his trash can before spilling it onto his lawn. Oh, okay. Well, you know, good help is hard to find these days. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Brett Longo said his home security camera sent him an activity alert and he checked the feed to discover two black bears in front of his Mary Esther Okaloosa County home. The video shows one of the bears wheeling Longo's trash can from the curb back up his driveway. It was full, Longo told Northwest Florida Daily News. That bad boy was to the top. <laughs> Longo jokingly suggested the bear was trying to be helpful. He was just bringing it up to the house, he said. He was polite enough to move it out of the driveway. The bear's action turned out to be not so good deed, though, because it spilled the trash can's content all over Longo's lawn. Well, you know what? At least the bear was having fun, right? A man has won nearly $150,000 on a birthday gift lottery ticket. Well, that's the best birthday gift ever. Love to hear all these stories of the lottery, people winning the lottery. I hope that all the people winning the lottery in the world actually maybe didn't have a job and maybe they were struggling. I'd love to think that it's the people that were struggling that got that magic money. I feel like the energy of Jupiter is upon us and that luck, money, wealth, prosperity, abundance energy is with us. I don't know if you've been feeling it, but I've been feeling that energy swirl around me for the past three days. So hopefully you felt that too. So, um, a leopard has wandered through a town after a game preserve escape. Well, that's fun. A lot of escaped animals this week. The largest cam clam, I'm sorry, cam, (laughs) the largest clam has been discovered, uh, by an 11 year old. In Rhode Island, in Quahog, Quahog, I can't even say that, 
Yeah, just like the cartoon. I thought that was a made-up name. I didn't know that was real. Seth MacFarlane, I thought, made that name up. So, I guess a quahog is a large clam, and they think they found the largest one. This is a fun one. Glitch blamed for Mickey Mouse signing the tax refund checks. I I think this is a likely story. I I, I think this is a... I don't know. Let's see. Rhode Island state officials said that a technical glitch was to blame for 176 tax refund checks being mailed out bearing the signatures of Mickey Mouse and Walt Disney. I don't know. I think they just don't want to pay the people. And by doing that, the bank won't cash it. What do you guys think? Sounds like they're trying to pull a fast one. Jade Borgeson, chief of staff for the Rhode Island Department of Revenue, confirmed the checks were mailed out this week with the signatures of Walt Disney and his most famous cartoon creation instead of Rhode Island general treasurer Seth Magaziner. That's a made-up name. Magaziner? What? This just sounds like a made-up story. Rhode Island General Treasurer Seth Magaziner and State Controller Peter Keenan. As a result of a technical error in the Division of Taxation's automatic refund check printing system, approximately 170 checks with invalid signature lines were printed and mailed to taxpayers on Monday, Borgeson said in a statement to WJAR TV. The invalid signature lines were incorrectly sourced from the division's test print files. Borgeson said the most er most of the erroneous checks were corporate tax refunds. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. This sounds like they're trying to pull a fast one to me. The corrected checks will be reissued to and back to taxpayers within one week, she told WPRI TV. I mean, maybe that was just a way to buy some time for a week. Maybe the money wasn't in there. Maybe there was some secret dealings. What do you guys think? That's weird, right? That is really, really strange. Like, why would they put Walt Disney's signature as one of their, like, pretend files or whatever? It does. That's an odd story, man. Here's another odd story. An alligator has been removed from a suburban Chicago lake. Well, that's fun. (laughs) I'm just going to tell you the headline because, you know, you could pretty much guess the rest, right? Paramedics have been, uh, or pulled over. Paramedics pulled over to rescue a skunk with a cup stuck over its head. Well, that's cute. Aw, alligators and skunks needing to be rescued. So cute. Deputies have yet rescued bear cubs trapped in a Colorado dumpster. I mean, while coronavirus is keeping humans home, the animals encroach upon our spaces that we encroached upon decades ago. And well, then they get in trouble and they need to be rescued because they're not used to our world. So, so that's pretty interesting. A girlfriend's comment comment about spelling leads a man to another, another lottery jackpot. Lots of lottery jackpot stories recently. So, a British Columbia man who won nearly $75,000 from a scratch-off lottery ticket said he chose his ticket because his girlfriend said he needed to work on his spelling. All right, I'll bite. Nicolaus Hama of Aberystwyth told British Columbia Lottery Corporation officials that he frequently plays scratch-off lottery tickets, but he owes his most recent choice to a suggestion from his girlfriend. I've always played the scratch and win tickets. My girlfriend told me to play crossword to help me with my spelling. The luxury crossword ticket that Hama purchased from the McCollum Road Town Pantry was a $74,674.50 winner. And Hama said he plans to use his winnings to take a vacation to Europe once it is safe 
to travel. So there you go. That's it. That's the odd news coming out of UPI. Let's see if we can't find any other stories. See how much time we've got here. Well, for your bemusement, I found a few more headlines. From news.sky.com forward slash strange news. I'm just going to give you a few few highlight headlines. So, uh, Seagull has repeatedly attacked a man at his house. <laughs> Yay. An alligator has tipped over a kayaker. Ooh. <laughs> and a woman has taken a selfie with a bear in Mexico. Well, that sounds fun. A U.S. ambassador had to shave off his controversial colonial mustache. A big cat sighting in West Sussex was nothing to have kittens about, according to the police. And a woman has traded a hairpin for a minivan and reveals plans for getting a house. I guess there's a a challenge and she started off slow and traded a hairpin for something like a scrunchie, I guess. I don't know. Traded that up and ended up with a cell phone and a whole bunch of things. This is a weird article. I'm not going to read it. But news.sky.com forward slash strange news if you do want to read it. But last but not least, here is our last story of the night. A giant swarm of flying ants have been spotted from space over the UK. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I mean, this is like biblical stuff right here. A spokesperson for the Met Office says there are likely to be thousands of insects within the cloud spotted above England's coast. They call it Flying flying Ant Day. Flying Ant Day. Brings huge swarms to the UK skies. Wow. A 50-mile wide swarm of flying ants has been making its way over the UK, and it's so huge that it's been spotted from space. The enormous cloud of insects was picked up by the Met Office's Weather radar over Kent, or Kent, I'm sorry, Kent, and Sussex on England's southeast coast. The weather service said smaller swarms could be seen over London. Oh my gosh, it's really crazy. I'm looking at the picture now. Wow. A video was released by the Met Office alongside a tweet that says, It's not raining in London, Kent, or Sussex. But our radar says otherwise. The radar is actually picking up a swarm of hashtag flying ants across the southeast. During the summer, ants can take to the skies in a mass emergence, usually on warm, humid, and windless days, known as hashtag flying ant day. A spokesman for the Met Office said there were likely to be thousands of ants within the swarm, which, hello, you already told us that. All right. Oh, but he does say, all right, one more. So a few more things here. Sorry about that. Cut the article off at the end. So it's not unusual for larger swarms to be picked up. I think he means by the radar. A similar thing happened almost exactly a year ago on Flying Ant Day. And on days like today when it's sunny, the radar detects the swarm. But we're able to see that they are not the same shape as water droplets. And in fact, they look more, well, insect-like. Large swarms of the insects appear in what is widely known as Flying Ant Day when males and new queens leave the nest to mate with many ant colonies doing so on the same day. Really? That's really weird, isn't it? It's mating day for ants. What the hell? The Royal Society of Biology points out there is not always one such day with flying ants spotted on as many as 96% of the days between June and September. Oh, okay. So they're just happening to call it that flying ant day it's not like a you know part of their schedule it's not in their calendar their teeny tiny ant calendars oh what day is it it's july 31st oh good 
Flying Ant Day, we get to go mate with our queens. <laughs> very, very weird. Well, that's it. It's been a wonderful week of metaphysical soul speak, but now we're coming to a close. I hope that you've enjoyed this week, and I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I want to thank you all for your nominations during the month of July, and I'm grateful for your vote, for having been nominated. It's been awesome. A lot of you have told me that you did vote for me, so I very much appreciate that as far as the People's Choice Podcast Awards are concerned. Thank you for your continued faith and confidence in me and my abilities, as well as your continued loyalty and support of Metaphysical Soul Speak, the podcast. I want to also thank you guys for being on this amazing spiritual ascension journey over the past 17 months. It's been, has it been 17 months? No, it's been 19 months. Oh my gosh. I've been really blessed to have, to have had the privilege to even make this show. So I'm really, really grateful that you are here with me. You are aboard, on board (laughs) with the show. I have a lot more new listeners and it's growing by leaps and bounds. And I wanted to thank those of you who have promoted me on Instagram. I really appreciate it. If you haven't done that yet, you can just go ahead and make a post of your favorite episode just to get the word out about the show. It's been really helping me, and I literally have three more paychecks before I have no more paychecks at all. So I am trying to just keep doing my show and scrambling to make it. So please pray for me if you can. Just keep listening to the show because every little bit helps. I make a penny every time you listen to the show, every time you listen to the the anchor commercial basically. So thank you so much for that, for your continued support in that as well. And thank you to those of you who have become listener supporters for the show. I'm really, really grateful for your um, support and your help because I've been putting my heart and soul into this. I mean, I've spent between 4,000 and 6,000 hours creating the show for you in the past 500 and something, I don't know, 508 episodes or so. And, um, it's been a lot of work. So I appreciate your support. And that's what I have to say. And besides that, I love you. I love you so much. I'm so happy that we get to have this shared human experience in the, um, quantum matrix and on this planet together. And in the third, now through the fifth dimension. I'm really grateful that we got to have this time. I will be back on Monday with all unique and original programming, just like always. And we will resume our reading of the Kaiba Lion on Monday. But until then, I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. And if you're listening to this on Monday, I hope you already had a wonderful weekend. Or whenever you hear this. Don't forget to count your blessings as soon as you're done with this episode write down five things you're grateful for that you consider to be blessings in your life the more you're grateful for the more you'll bring into your life and that is what I wish for you a wonderful joyous happy and abundant existence but with that I'm signing off with peace and joy and the high vibes of the Holy Fifth Dimension. Until next time, guys, peace. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. 
Thank you.